player props as we continue on with NBA best bets. They're always interesting ones. Scanning them quickly here in the DK Sportsbook. You got Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, three plus three pointers each. Uh, Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, 25 points plus each. You can look at Draymond Green, triple double. That just scratches the surface. Again, Matt, you have a million different options here. What stands out to you? So I'm going to take something I think that is way more boring than all of the stuff you just said, because yes, it's fun to root for these alternate point totals and alternate three point totals. I don't really see why there would be value on any of that. Like to me, if anything, this game is probably going to be lower scoring than people expect. And also the prices for these alternate lines. I just never really like them that much. Um, but there's a head to head line. I know this is similar to the one Julian liked, but Al Horford's rebounds versus Kevon Looney's rebounds. Mm. If we get Robert Williams not playing, Horford's got to play more five. I really don't think Tice is going to play much in this series either way. And then Looney plays less. So the Williams either not being there or reduced minutes, I think helps Horford out-rebound Kevon Looney, who I think could lose some minutes there. And maybe everyone's taking for granted that Looney is now suddenly this very important part of the Warriors rotation. But when they're healthy, he plays 20 to 25 minutes. I don't think we should expect 30 minutes, even with maybe Peyton and Porter and Iguodala all somewhat limited. I still think Looney being out there for three quarters of the game is kind of a ridiculous assumption. So I think Horford should out-rebound him for the series. There's props on that too. But for game one, especially if Williams isn't playing, I think Horford is the Celtics' main rebounder and Looney probably loses a little bit. Jules, Matt, going first, meant more time for you to peruse the DK Sportsbook. What'd you find? Yes, and while I was perusing, believe it or not, I did actually read the questions for this segment. I'm supposed to save head-to-head for next, right? Yes, please do. Okay, Okay. (laughs) I'll save my head-to-head. Matt pulled a me and broke the rules and just said whatever he wanted. We don't need to go Um, next. Okay, strictly for the the props. um, So a couple ways to go here. And I like everything that Matt's on to, I I like, and I think we can kind of go that route. But so Draymond Green points-wise, and this will tie into my head-to-head, he doesn't look to score early in series. He scores more as the series goes on and those closeout games approach and you kind of need it more. He's not like, he knows the Celtics are going to give him shots and he's not going to take them in this game because he's going to be looking to distribute, especially if this becomes a small ball game with no Robert Williams and Derek White's on the floor and Poole gets more minutes. And that's another dribble handoff guy. Um, So like Draymond Green is not going to attempt shots. He scored eight total points in his two games against the Celtics Draymond Green under eight and a half points feels pretty good in this one. Um, And then the other one just ties into Williams. If Rob Williams doesn't play, again, we need to see what the rotations look like. Boston might be forced into some small ball, but I still think Grant Williams gets significant run um, whether he starts or not. So Grant Williams props maybe a points or rebounds or combined over if there's no Robert Williams makes some sense. 